Ezekiel chapters 36 through 44 of the Holy Bible American Standard Version. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 36 And thou, son of man, prophesy unto the mountains of Israel, and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of Jehovah. Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, Because the enemy hath said against you, Aha! and the ancient high places are ours in possession. Therefore prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, Because, even because, they have made you desolate, and swallowed you up on every side, that ye might be a possession unto the residue of the nations, and ye are taken up in the lips of talkers, and the evil report of the people, Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord Jehovah. Thus saith the Lord Jehovah to the mountains and to the hills, to the watercourses and to the valleys, to the desolate wastes and to the cities that are forsaken, which are become a prey and derision to the residue of the nations that are round about. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Jehovah, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the nations, and against all Edom, that have appointed my land unto themselves for a possession, with the joy of all their heart, with despite of soul, to cast it out for a prey. Therefore prophesy concerning the land of Israel, and say unto the mountains and to the hills, to the watercourses and to the valleys. Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my wrath, because ye have borne the shame of the nations. Therefore thus saith the Lord Jehovah, I have sworn, saying, Surely the nations that are round about you, they shall bear their shame. But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches, and yield your fruit to my people Israel, for they are at hand to come. For behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and sown, and I will multiply men upon you all the house of Israel, even all of it, and the cities shall be inhabited, and the waste places shall be builded. And I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and be fruitful, and I will cause you to be inhabited after your former estate, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And ye shall know that I am Jehovah, Yea, I will cause men to walk upon you, even my people Israel, and they shall possess thee, and thou shalt be their inheritance, and thou shalt no more henceforth bereave them of children. Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, Because they say unto you, Thou land art a devourer of men, and hast been a bereaver of thy nation, Therefore thou shalt devour men no more, neither bereave thy nation any more, saith the Lord Jehovah. Neither will I let thee hear any more the shame of the nations, neither shalt thou bear the reproach of the peoples any more, neither shalt thou cause thy nation to stumble any more, saith the Lord Jehovah. Moreover the word of Jehovah came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their way and by their doings. Their way before me was as the uncleanness of a woman in her impurity. Wherefore I poured out my wrath upon them for the blood which they had poured out upon the land and because they had defiled it with their idols. And I scattered them among the nations, and they were dispersed through the countries. According to their way, and according to their doings, I judged them. And when they came unto the nations, whither they went, they profaned my holy name, 
in that men said of them these are the people of jehovah and are gone forth out of his land but i had regard for my holy name which the house of israel had profaned among the nations whither they went therefore say unto the house of israel thus saith the lord jehovah i do not this for your sake o house of israel but for my holy name which ye have profaned among the nations whither ye went and i will sanctify my great name which hath been profaned among the nations which ye have profaned in the midst of them and the nations shall know that i am jehovah saith the lord jehovah when i shall be sanctified in you before their eyes for i will take you from among the nations and gather you out of all the countries and will bring you into your own land and i will sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will i cleanse you a new heart also will i give you and a new spirit will i put within you and i will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and i will give you a heart of flesh and i will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep mine ordinances and do them and ye shall dwell in the land that i gave to your fathers and ye shall be my people and i will be your god and i will save you from all your uncleannesses and i will call for the grain and will multiply it and lay no famine upon you and i will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field that ye may receive no more the reproach of famine among the nations then shall ye remember your evil ways and your doings that were not good and ye shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations not for your sake do i this saith the lord jehovah be it known unto you be ashamed and confounded for your ways o house of israel thus saith the lord jehovah in the day that i cleanse you from all your iniquities i will cause the cities to be inhabited and the waste places shall be builded and the land that was desolate shall be tilled whereas it was a desolation in the sight of all that passed by and they shall say this land that was desolate is become like the garden of eden and the waste and desolate and ruined cities are fortified and inhabited then the nations that are left round about you shall know that i jehovah have builded the ruined places and planted that which was desolate i jehovah have spoken it and i will do it thus saith the lord jehovah for this moreover will i be inquired of by the house of israel to do it for them i will increase them with men like a flock as the flock for sacrifice as the flock of jerusalem in her appointed feasts so shall the waste cities be filled with flocks of men and they shall know that i am jehovah End of chapter 36 chapter 37 the hand of jehovah was upon me and he brought me out in the spirit of jehovah and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones and he caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry and he said unto me son of man can these bones live and i answered o lord jehovah thou knowest again he said unto me prophesy over these bones and say unto them o ye dry bones hear the word of jehovah thus saith the lord jehovah unto these bones behold i will cause breath to enter into you and ye shall live 
and I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am Jehovah. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a noise, and behold an earthquake, and the bones came together, bone to its bone, and I beheld, and lo, there were sinews upon them, and flesh came up, and skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost we are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, Behold, I will open your graves, and cause you to come up out of your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am Jehovah, when I have opened your graves, and caused you to come up out of your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I will place you in your own land, and ye shall know that I, Jehovah, have spoken it, and performed it, saith Jehovah. The word of Jehovah came again unto me, saying, and thou, son of man, take thee one stick, and write upon it, for Judah, and for the children of Israel his companions. Then take another stick, and write upon it, for Joseph the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel his companions. And join them for thee one to another into one stick, that they may become one in thy hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these? Say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel his companions, and I will put them with it, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thy hand before their eyes. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the nations whither they are gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions, but I will save them out of all their dwelling places, wherein they have sinned, and will cleanse them, so shall they be my people, and I will be their God. And my servant David shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd. They shall also walk in mine ordinances, and observe my statutes, and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given unto Jacob my servant, wherein your fathers dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, they and their children and their children's children, for ever. 
and David my servant shall be their prince for ever. Moreover I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them, and I will place them and multiply them, and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them for evermore. My tabernacle also shall be with them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And the nations shall know that I am Jehovah that sanctifieth Israel, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them for evermore. End of chapter 37 Chapter 38 And the word of Jehovah came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal, and I will turn thee about and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in full armor, a great company with buckler and shield, all of them handling swords, Persia, Cush, and Put with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his hordes, the house of Togarma in the uttermost parts of the north, and all his hordes, even many peoples with thee. Be thou prepared, yea, prepare thyself, thou and all thy companies that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. After many days thou shalt be visited. In the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword, that is gathered out of many peoples, upon the mountains of Israel, which have been a continual waste. But it is brought forth out of the peoples, and they shall dwell securely, all of them. And thou shalt ascend, thou shalt come like a storm, thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy hordes, and many peoples with thee. Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, It shall come to pass in that day, that things shall come into thy mind, and thou shalt devise an evil device, and thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages, I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell securely, all of them dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates, to take the spoil, and to take the prey, to turn thy hand against the waste places that are now inhabited, and against the people that are gathered out of the nations that have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the middle of the earth. Sheba and Dedan, and the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions thereof, shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take the spoil? Hast thou assembled thy company to take the prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to take great spoil? Therefore, son of man, prophesy, and say unto Gog, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, In that day when my people Israel dwelleth securely, shalt thou not know it? And thou shalt come from thy place out of the uttermost parts of the north, thou and many peoples with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall come to pass in the latter days that I will bring thee against my land, that the nations may know me when I shall be sanctified in thee, O Gog, before their eyes. Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, Art thou he of whom I spake in old time by my servants the prophets of Israel, that prophesied in those days for many years that I would bring thee against them? And it shall come to pass in that day 
when gog shall come against the land of israel saith the lord jehovah that my wrath shall come up into my nostrils for in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have i spoken surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of israel so that the fishes of the sea and the birds of the heavens and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground and i will call for a sword against him unto all my mountains saith the lord jehovah every man's sword shall be against his brother and with pestilence and with blood will i enter into judgment with him and i will rain upon him and upon his hordes and upon the many peoples that are with him an overflowing shower and great hailstones fire and brimstone and i will magnify myself and sanctify myself and i will make myself known in the eyes of many nations and they shall know that I am Jehovah. End of chapter 38 Chapter 39 And thou, son of man, prophesy against Gog, and say, Thus saith the Lord Jehovah, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, prince of Rosh, Meshech, and Tubal, and I will turn thee about, and will lead thee on, and will cause thee to come up from the uttermost parts of the north. And I will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel, and I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand, and will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy hordes, and the peoples that are with thee i will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort and to the beasts of the field to be devoured thou shalt fall upon the open field for i have spoken it saith the lord jehovah and i will send a fire on magog and on them that dwell securely in the isles and they shall know that i am jehovah and my holy name will I make known in the midst of my people Israel, neither will I suffer my holy name to be profaned any more. And the nations shall know that I am Jehovah, the Holy One in Israel. Behold, it cometh, and it shall be done, saith the Lord Jehovah. This is the day whereof I have spoken." And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth, and shall make fires of the weapons, and burn them, both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows, and the hand-staves, and the spears, and they shall make fires of them seven years, so that they shall take no wood out of the field, neither cut down any out of the forests, for they shall make fires of the weapons and they shall plunder those that plundered them, and rob those that robbed them, saith the Lord Jehovah. And it shall come to pass in that day, that I will give unto Gog a place for burial in Israel, the valley of them that pass through on the east of the sea, and it shall stop them that pass through, and there shall they bury Gog, and all his multitude, and they shall call it the valley of Haman Gog. And seven months shall the house of Israel be burying them, that they may cleanse the land. Yea, all the people of the land shall bury them, and it shall be to them a renown in the day that I shall be glorified, saith the Lord Jehovah and they shall set apart men of continual employment that shall pass through the land, and with them that pass through, those that bury them that remain upon the face of the land, to cleanse it. After the end of seven months shall they search, 
and they that pass through the land shall pass through and when any seeth a man's bone then shall he set up a sign by it till the buriers have buried it in the valley of haman gog and hemona shall also be the name of a city thus shall they cleanse the land and thou son of man thus saith the lord jehovah speak unto the birds of every sort and to every beast of the field assemble yourselves and come gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice that i do sacrifice for you even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of israel that ye may eat flesh and drink blood ye shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth of rams of lambs and of goats of bullocks all of them fatlings of bashan and ye shall eat fat till ye be full and drink blood till ye be drunken of my sacrifice which i have sacrificed for you and ye shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots with mighty men and with all men of war saith the lord jehovah and i will set my glory among the nations and all the nations shall see my judgment that i have executed and my hand that i have laid upon them so the house of israel shall know that i am jehovah their god from that day and forward and the nations shall know that the house of israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they trespassed against me and i hid my face from them so i gave them into the hand of their adversaries and they fell all of them by the sword according to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions did i unto them and i hid my face from them therefore thus saith the lord jehovah now will i bring back the captivity of jacob and have mercy upon the whole house of israel and i will be jealous for my holy name and they shall bear their shame and all their trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me when they shall dwell securely in their land and none shall make them afraid when i have brought them back from the peoples and gather them out of their enemies lands and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations and they shall know that i am jehovah their god in that i caused them to go into captivity among the nations and have gathered them unto their own land and i will leave none of them any more there neither will i hide my face any more from them for i have poured out my spirit upon the house of israel saith the lord jehovah end of chapter thirty nine chapter forty in the five and twentieth year of our captivity in the beginning of the year in the tenth day of the month in the fourteenth year after that the city was smitten in the selfsame day the hand of jehovah was upon me and he brought me thither in the visions of god brought he me into the land of israel and set me down upon a very high mountain whereon was as it were the frame of a city on the south and he brought me thither and behold there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of brass with a line of flax in his hand and a measuring reed and he stood in the gate and the man said unto me son of man behold with thine eyes and hear with thine ears and set thy heart upon all that i shall show thee for to the intent that i may show them unto thee art thou brought hither declare all that thou seest to the house of israel and behold a wall on the outside of the house round about and in the man's hand a measuring reed six cubits long of a cubit and a hand breadth each 
so he measured the thickness of the building one reed and the height one reed then came he unto the gate which looketh toward the east and went up the steps thereof and he measured the threshold of the gate one reed broad and the other threshold one reed broad and every lodge was one reed long and one reed broad and the space between the lodges was five cubits and the threshold of the gate by the porch of the gate toward the house was one reed he measured also the porch of the gate toward the house one reed then measured he the porch of the gate eight cubits and the posts thereof two cubits and the porch of the gate was toward the house and the lodges of the gate eastward were three on this side and three on that side they three were of one measure and the posts had one measure on this side and on that side and he measured the breadth of the opening of the gate ten cubits and the length of the gate thirteen cubits and a border before the lodges one cubit on this side and a border one cubit on that side and the lodges six cubits on this side and six cubits on that side and he measured the gate from the roof of the one lodge to the roof of the other a breadth of five and twenty cubits door against door he made also posts threescore cubits and the court reached unto the posts round about the gate and from the forefront of the gate at the entrance unto the forefront of the inner porch of the gate were fifty cubits and there were closed windows to the lodges and to their posts within the gate round about and likewise to the arches and windows were round about inward and upon each post were palm trees then brought he me into the outer court and lo there were chambers and a pavement made for the court round about thirty chambers were upon the pavement and the pavement was by the side of the gates answerable unto the length of the gates even the lower pavement then he measured the breadth from the forefront of the lower gate unto the forefront of the inner court without a hundred cubits both on the east and on the north and the gate of the outer court whose prospect is toward the north he measured the length thereof and the breadth thereof and the lodges thereof were three on this side and three on that side and the posts thereof and the arches thereof were after the measure of the first gate the length thereof was fifty cubits and the breadth five and twenty cubits and the windows thereof and the arches thereof and the palm trees thereof were after the measure of the gate whose prospect is toward the east and they went up unto it by seven steps and the arches thereof were before them and there was a gate to the inner court over against the other gate both on the north and on the east and he measured from gate to gate a hundred cubits and he led me toward the south and behold at gate toward the south and he measured the posts thereof and the arches thereof according to these measures and there were windows in it and in the arches thereof round about like those windows the length was fifty cubits and the breadth five and twenty cubits and there were seven steps to go up to it and the arches thereof were before them and it had palm trees one on this side and another on that side upon the posts thereof and there was a gate to the inner court toward the south and he measured from gate to gate toward the south a hundred cubits then he brought me to the inner court by the south gate and he measured the south gate according to these measures and the lodges thereof and the posts thereof and the arches thereof according to these measures 
and there were windows in it and in the arches thereof round about it was fifty cubits long and five and twenty cubits broad and there were arches round about five and twenty cubits long and five cubits broad and the arches thereof were toward the outer court and palm trees were upon the posts thereof and the ascent to it had eight steps and he brought me into the inner court toward the east and he measured the gate according to these measures and the lodges thereof and the posts thereof and the arches thereof according to these measures and there were windows therein and in the arches thereof round about it was fifty cubits long and five and twenty cubits broad and the arches thereof were toward the outer court and palm trees were upon the posts thereof on this side and on that side and the ascent to it had eight steps and he brought me to the north gate and he measured it according to these measures the lodges thereof the posts thereof and the arches thereof and there were windows therein round about the length was fifty cubits and the breadth five and twenty cubits and the posts thereof were toward the outer court and palm trees were upon the posts thereof on this side and on that side and the ascent to it had eight steps and a chamber with the door thereof was by the posts at the gates there they washed the burnt offering and in the porch of the gate were two tables on this side and two tables on that side to slay thereon the burnt offering and the sin offering and the trespass offering and on the one side without as one goeth up to the entry of the gate toward the north were two tables and on the other side which belonged to the porch of the gate were two tables four tables were on this side and four tables on that side by the side of the gate eight tables whereupon they slew the sacrifices and there were four tables for the burnt offering of hewn stone a cubit and a half long and a cubit and a half broad and one cubit high whereupon they laid the instruments wherewith they slew the burnt offering and the sacrifice and the hooks a hand breadth long were fastened within round about and upon the tables was the flesh of the oblation and without the inner gate were chambers for the singers in the inner court which was at the side of the north gate and their prospect was toward the south one at the side of the east gate having the prospect toward the north and he said unto me this chamber whose prospect is toward the south is for the priests the keepers of the charge of the house and the chamber whose prospect is toward the north is for the priests the keepers of the charge of the altar these are the sons of zadok who from among the sons of levi come near to jehovah to minister unto him and he measured the court a hundred cubits long and a hundred cubits broad foursquare and the altar was before the house then he brought me to the porch of the house and measured each post of the porch five cubits on this side and five cubits on that side and the breadth of the gate was three cubits on this side and three cubits on that side the length of the porch was twenty cubits and the breadth eleven cubits even by the steps whereby they went up to it and there were pillars by the posts one on this side and another on that side end of chapter forty chapter forty one and he brought me to the temple and measured the posts six cubits broad on the one side and six cubits broad on the other side which was the breadth of the tabernacle 
and the breadth of the entrance was ten cubits, and the sides of the entrance were five cubits on the one side, and five cubits on the other side. And he measured the length thereof, forty cubits, and the breadth twenty cubits. Then went he inward, and measured each post of the entrance, two cubits, and the entrance six cubits, and the breadth of the entrance seven cubits. And he measured the length thereof twenty cubits, and the breadth twenty cubits, before the temple. And he said unto me, This is the most holy place. Then he measured the wall of the house six cubits, and the breadth of every side chamber four cubits, round about the house on every side. And the side chambers were in three stories, one over another, and thirty in order, and they entered into the wall which belonged to the house for the side chambers round about, that they might have hold therein, and not have hold in the wall of the house. And the side chambers were broader as they encompassed the house, higher and higher, for the encompassing of the house went higher and higher round about the house. Therefore the breadth of the house continued upward, and so one went up from the lowest chamber to the highest by the middle chamber. I saw also that the house had a raised basement round about. The foundations of the side chambers were a full reed of six great cubits. The thickness of the wall which was for the side chambers on the outside was five cubits, and that which was left was the place of the side chambers that belonged to the house, and between the chambers was a breadth of twenty cubits round about the house on every side, and the doors of the side chambers were toward the place that was left, one door toward the north and another door toward the south, and the breadth of the place that was left was five cubits round about. And the building that was before the separate place at the side toward the west was seventy cubits broad, and the wall of the building was five cubits thick round about, and the length thereof ninety cubits. So he measured the house a hundred cubits long, and the separate place and the building with the walls thereof a hundred cubits long, also the breadth of the face of the house, and of the separate place toward the east, a hundred cubits. And he measured the length of the building before the separate place, which was at the back thereof, and the galleries thereof on the one side, and on the other side, a hundred cubits. And the inner temple, and the porches of the court, the thresholds, and the closed windows, and the galleries round about on their three stories, over against the threshold, sealed with wood round about, and from the ground up to the windows, now the windows were covered, to the space above the door, even unto the inner house, and without, and by all the wall round about, within and without, by measure and it was made with cherubim and palm trees, and a palm tree was between cherub and cherub, and every cherub had two faces, so that there was the face of a man toward the palm tree on the one side, and the face of a young lion toward the palm tree on the other side. Thus was it made through all the house round about from the ground unto above the door were cherubim and palm trees made. Thus was the wall of the temple. As for the temple, the doorposts were squared, and as for the face of the sanctuary, the appearance thereof was as the appearance of the temple. The altar was of wood, three cubits high, and the length thereof two cubits, and the corners thereof, and the length thereof, and the walls thereof, were of wood, 
and he said unto me this is the table that is before jehovah and the temple and the sanctuary had two doors and the doors had two leaves apiece two turning leaves two leaves for the one door and two leaves for the other and there were made on them on the doors of the temple cherubim and palm trees like as were made upon the walls and there was a threshold of wood upon the face of the porch without and there were closed windows and palm trees on the one side and on the other side on the sides of the porch thus were the side chambers of the house and the thresholds end of chapter forty one chapter forty two then he brought me forth into the outer court the way toward the north and he brought me into the chamber that was over against the separate place and which was over against the building toward the north before the length of a hundred cubits was the north door and the breadth was fifty cubits over against the twenty cubits which belonged to the inner court and over against the pavement which belonged to the outer court was gallery against gallery in the third story and before the chambers was a walk of ten cubits breadth inward a way of one cubit and their doors were toward the north now the upper chambers were shorter for the galleries took away from these more than from the lower and the middlemost in the building for they were in three stories and they had not pillars as the pillars of the courts therefore the uppermost was straightened more than the lowest and the middlemost from the ground and the wall that was without by the side of the chambers toward the outer court before the chambers the length thereof was fifty cubits for the length of the chambers that were in the outer court was fifty cubits and lo before the temple were a hundred cubits and from under these chambers was the entry on the east side as one goeth into them from the outer court in the thickness of the wall of the court toward the east before the separate place and before the building there were chambers and the way before them was like the appearance of the way of the chambers which were toward the north according to their length so was their breadth and all their egresses were both according to their fashions and according to their doors and according to the doors of the chambers that were toward the south was a door at the head of the way even the way directly before the wall toward the east as one entereth into them then said he unto me the north chambers and the south chambers which are before the separate place they are the holy chambers where the priests that are near unto jehovah shall eat the most holy things there shall they lay the most holy things and the meal offering and the sin offering and the trespass offering for the place is holy when the priests enter in then shall they not go out of the holy place into the inner court but there they shall lay their garments wherein they minister for they are holy and they shall put on other garments and shall approach to that which pertaineth to the people now when he had made an end of measuring the inner house he brought me forth by the way of the gate whose prospect is toward the east and measured it round about he measured on the east side with the measuring reed five hundred reeds with the measuring reed round about he measured on the north side five hundred reeds with the measuring reed round about he measured on the south side five hundred reeds with the measuring reed he turned about to the west side and measured five hundred reeds with the measuring reed 
he measured it on the four sides it had a wall round about the length five hundred and the breadth five hundred to make a separation between that which was holy and that which was common end of chapter forty two chapter forty three afterward he brought me to the gate even the gate that looketh toward the east and behold the glory of the god of israel came from the way of the east and his voice was like the sound of many waters and the earth shined with his glory and it was according to the appearance of the vision which i saw even according to the vision that i saw when i came to destroy the city and the visions were like the vision that i saw by the river kibar and i fell upon my face and the glory of jehovah came into the house by the way of the gate whose prospect is toward the east and the spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court and behold the glory of jehovah filled the house and i heard one speaking unto me out of the house and a man stood by me and he said unto me son of man this is the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet where i will dwell in the midst of the children of israel for ever and the house of israel shall no more defile my holy name neither they nor their kings by their whoredom and by the dead bodies of their kings in their high places in their setting of their threshold by my threshold and their doorpost beside my doorpost and there was but the wall between me and them and they have defiled my holy name by their abominations which they have committed wherefore i have consumed them in mine anger now let them put away their whoredom and the dead bodies of their kings far from me and i will dwell in the midst of them for ever thou son of man show the house to the house of israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquities and let them measure the pattern and if they be ashamed of all that they have done make known unto them the form of the house and the fashion thereof and the egresses thereof and the entrances thereof and all the forms thereof and all the ordinances thereof and all the forms thereof and all the laws thereof and write it in their sight that they may keep the whole form thereof and all the ordinances thereof and do them this is the law of the house upon the top of the mountain the whole limit thereof round about shall be most holy behold this is the law of the house and these are the measures of the altar by cubits the cubit is a cubit and a hand breadth the bottom shall be a cubit and the breadth a cubit and the border thereof by the edge thereof round about a span and this shall be the base of the altar and from the bottom upon the ground to the lower ledge shall be two cubits and the breadth one cubit and from the lesser ledge to the greater ledge shall be four cubits and the breadth a cubit and the upper altar shall be four cubits and from the altar hearth and upward there shall be four horns and the altar hearth shall be twelve cubits long by twelve broad square in the four sides thereof and the ledge shall be fourteen cubits long by fourteen broad in the four sides thereof and the border about it shall be half a cubit and the bottom thereof shall be a cubit round about and the steps thereof shall look toward the east and he said unto me son of man thus saith the lord jehovah 
these are the ordinances of the altar in the day when they shall make it to offer burnt offerings thereon and to sprinkle blood thereon thou shalt give to the priests the levites that are of the seed of zadok who are near unto me to minister unto me saith the lord jehovah a young bullock for a sin offering and thou shalt take of the blood thereof and put on the four horns of it and on the four corners of the ledge and upon the border round about thus shalt thou cleanse it and make atonement for it thou shalt also take the bullock of the sin offering and it shall be burnt in the appointed place of the house without the sanctuary and on the second day thou shalt offer a he-goat without blemish for a sin offering and they shall cleanse the altar as they did cleanse it with the bullock when thou hast made an end of cleansing it thou shalt offer a young bullock without blemish and a ram out of the flock without blemish and thou shalt bring them near before jehovah and the priests shall cast salt upon them and they shall offer them up for a burnt offering unto jehovah seven days shalt thou prepare every day a goat for a sin offering they shall also prepare a young bullock and a ram out of the flock without blemish seven days shall they make atonement for the altar and purify it so shall they consecrate it and when they have accomplished the days it shall be that upon the eighth day and forward the priests shall make your burnt offerings upon the altar and your peace offerings and i will accept you saith the lord jehovah end of chapter forty three chapter forty four then he brought me back by the way of the outer gate of the sanctuary which looketh toward the east and it was shut and jehovah said unto me this gate shall be shut it shall not be opened neither shall any man enter in by it for jehovah the god of israel hath entered in by it therefore it shall be shut as for the prince he shall sit therein as prince to eat bread before jehovah he shall enter by the way of the porch of the gate and shall go out by the way of the same then he brought me by the way of the north gate before the house and i looked and behold the glory of jehovah filled the house of jehovah and i fell upon my face and jehovah said unto me son of man mark well and behold with thine eyes and hear with thine ears all that i say unto thee concerning all the ordinances of the house of jehovah and all the laws thereof and mark well the entrance of the house with every egress of the sanctuary and thou shalt say to the rebellious even to the house of israel thus saith the lord jehovah o ye house of israel let it suffice you of all your abominations in that ye have brought in foreigners uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh to be in my sanctuary to profane it even my house when ye offer my bread the fat and the blood and they have broken my covenant to add unto all your abominations and ye have not kept the charge of my holy things but ye have set keepers of my charge and my sanctuary for yourselves thus saith the lord jehovah no foreigner uncircumcised in heart and uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary of any foreigners that are among the children of israel but the levites that went far from me when israel went astray that went astray from me after their idols they shall bear their iniquity yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary having oversight at the gates of the house and ministering in the house 
they shall slay the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people and they shall stand before them to minister unto them because they ministered unto them before their idols and became a stumbling block of iniquity unto the house of israel therefore have i lifted up my hand against them saith the lord jehovah and they shall bear their iniquity and they shall not come near unto me to execute the office of priest unto me nor to come near to any of my holy things unto the things that are most holy but they shall bear their shame and their abominations which they have committed yet will i make them keepers of the charge of the house for all the service thereof and for all that shall be done therein but the priests the levites the sons of zadok that kept the charge of my sanctuary when the children of israel went astray from me they shall come near to me to minister unto me and they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood saith the lord jehovah they shall enter into my sanctuary and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me and they shall keep my charge and it shall be that when they enter in at the gates of the inner court they shall be clothed with linen garments and no wool shall come upon them while they minister in the gates of the inner court and within they shall have linen tires upon their heads and shall have linen breeches upon their loins they shall not gird themselves with anything that causeth sweat and when they go forth into the outer court even into the outer court to the people they shall put off their garments wherein they minister and lay them in the holy chambers and they shall put on other garments that they sanctify not the people with their garments neither shall they shave their heads nor suffer their locks to grow long they shall only cut off the hair of their heads neither shall any of the priests drink wine when they enter into the inner court neither shall they take for their wives a widow nor her that is put away but they shall take virgins of the seed of the house of israel or a widow that is the widow of a priest and they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and the common and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean and in a controversy they shall stand to judge according to mine ordinances shall they judge it and they shall keep my laws and my statutes in all my appointed feasts and they shall hallow my sabbaths and they shall go in to no dead person to defile themselves but for father or for mother or for son or for daughter for brother or for sister that hath had no husband they may defile themselves and after he is cleansed they shall reckon unto him seven days and in the day that he goeth into the sanctuary into the inner court to minister in the sanctuary he shall offer his sin offering saith the lord jehovah and they shall have an inheritance i am their inheritance and ye shall give them no possession in israel i am their possession they shall eat the meal offering and the sin offering and the trespass offering and every devoted thing in israel shall be theirs and the first of all the first fruits of everything and every oblation of everything of all your oblations shall be for the priest ye shall also give unto the priests the first of your dough to cause a blessing to rest on thy house the priests shall not eat of anything that dieth of itself or is torn whether it be bird or beast End of chapter forty four